was on Jesus when he died on the cross. Power goes down and power get up. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved and called you. Welcome again to Jesus Since Answer Ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. And I tell you, Saints, what a glorious week we had last week. It, it is written that, that, that we might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And it's so important that, that, that we understand uh, the importance of the Gospels. Now, again, when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you can start on the Acts all the way back. The, the, some of the Gospels are, are, are not spoke to the church. The Bible really is, is, is really spoken to three groups of people. The Jews, the Gentiles, and the church. And, and what happens is when preachers uh, and, and, and believers just mix all this up and, and you don't know who God is talking to, then you could give me some God said to them under the law of Moses, and then you could try to give something God gave to the church to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles can't live like Christians. They're not born again. And so the letters are wrote just to the church. They're not wrote to Jews. They're not wrote to Gentiles. They ain't going to understand nothing like that. And so... We, we need, as we read here in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, that many other signs truly did Jesus in, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. But these are written. They see the things that, that, that the Holy Ghost inspired Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to write. They are written that we might believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believe it, you might have life through his name. You might live what he is. And, and, and you might receive what Jesus walked in. And, 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 and when you receive that, saint, you can walk just like Jesus on this earth. As he is, so are we in this world. And so if you don't, if you don't get your mind renewed, that Jesus said in John 10, 10, that I am come that you have life and have it more abundantly. You will probably just live in your strength a whole lot, live in your ability, what you can't do, what you can do, and still are living in him and, and trusting in him, relying on him, depending on him for everything. Now, let, let's go. I want to, uh, I really feel the Holy Spirit leading me to go to Mark chapter 5. Um, in verse uh, 25 there was a certain woman now listen this is written so that you would believe that Jesus is when, when you see that Jesus opened blind eyes and walked on water turned water to wine um, you, you, you need to know that that same Jesus is still alive today and as you believe what Jesus did while he was on earth, you can trust him to do whatever. You might have eyes. You might not need a miracle to, to open your eyes, but you might need a miracle or a manifestation of Jesus in, in something else. And so as you, as you read the Gospels, it's supposed to make you believe that he's the one sent from God and nothing's impossible with him. L.G. Lake daughter body got burned 80 percent of her body and he went and just laid hands and prayed for her the next morning her, her body was all back clean well where did he get that from well he got that from jesus that we don't see nobody in the bible body burn 80 or, or 70 or 60 or 50 percent we don't see that but we see jesus raising the dead and healing the sick and so that, that makes us be able to believe that whatever circumstance we go through in life, that Jesus the Christ can come through in that, no matter what it is. No matter what it is. And what's happening is people, are, 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 a lot of times, are taught that 
that God don't do miracles no more today. And that's, that's just, that is just insane. Why would the writer, the apostle John, write that these things are written that you might believe Jesus is the Christ? Why would he write that? What, what would be the need of, of, of writing about all these miracles? And, um, and so you see here, now this is something that this is, the most important uh, area in on this subject is written that, that I teach. All of it's good, but this right here you really need. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, she'd suffer many things of many positions and had spent all the money she had and was nothing better. Wow, that's discouraging. But rather grew worse. Woo! Lord, could you tell that woman was depressed? I mean, she she has got money. Then went to all these positions, paid all of them, you know, for doing what they thought they could do for her, and all she got was worse. And now she broke. And um, and when she had heard of Jesus, oh glory to God! See, saints, she heard. Now we we go read. We hear from what we read. We hear from uh, the pastor, teachers, or the uh, uh, gifts of God. But but I believe we need to spend more time in, in the word ourselves. And meditating and reading who Jesus is and what Jesus did. So we, we quit putting up with stuff in life. Many times people are not taught to believe that Jesus can do anything. That he's the Christ. And um, and so she heard. When she heard, what, what did she hear? She heard Jesus was going around healing everybody. Now, now, now watch now. I want you to see what, what the Lord is speaking to you in this. She didn't hear that people were getting healed of that blood disease. She heard he was opening blind eyes. He was uh, uh, healing people of sickness and disease, casting out dumb and deaf spirits. Uh, he was raising the dead. He was he and Jesus. And she heard about the things Jesus was doing. And she took that and 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 said, look, and said, came in the press behind, touched his clothes. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And so straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. I, I know last, uh, last night I prayed uh, for several people. One lady had four dislocated discs. Uh, her spine was crooked, and uh, and I told her Jesus can straighten that spine out, and He did. And and um, another lady came up that stayed in pain uh, all the time, and and Jesus healed her and made her whole. And uh, she she was she felt back there where her discs were put back together. Yeah, yeah. See see. You're not supposed to hear this about Jesus and then you just keep on, you know, suffering what you got. It, it's written to, so you'll believe where you can receive. Amen. And so a lot of people just sit around and watch Christian television all the time and just still stay sick, stay bound. But God want to do something about your situation. And he's able. The Lord is able. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's able. And, and then Jesus immediately knowing in himself that that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the crowd, in the press, and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples, they said unto Jesus, thou see the multitude, everybody was touching Jesus. A lot of people going to church, they, they touching Jesus, but they ain't getting nothing. And, um, and Jesus looked round about to see her that had done this thing. 
But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. She gave a testimony. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith, get this now, have made thee whole. What is your faith? Your faith, saints, is when you hear about Jesus Christ and it, it activates you to go trust him for your situation in your life or situations. Your faith can make you whole. And then, you know, if some dumb, uh, you know, real dumb and stupid preacher tell you God don't heal today and God don't do miracles today. And that's right. They're, they're dumb. They're stupefied. They're very ignorant of, of Jesus. Um, and and then, then, then you, you, when you hear all these miracles and you hear about all this stuff, it, it, it don't produce you believing the Lord can do it in your area. And you just suffer. I remember one precious lady. She went to some church and some denomination that think they really great. And and I, she she said, oh oh she she's one of my neighbors and she was hurting so bad. And I said, oh if I pray for you, Jesus heal you of that. You know, trying to get her to believe. And she said, oh I don't believe in miracles. I don't believe the Lord do that today. And I. I said, well, who told you that? She said, well, that's that's what I believe. And she was very adamant about it. So I just, you know, went on, walked off. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You sit there and beg her to try to believe? You can't do that. And um, you, you can just miss out. Stay sick. Stay bound. Stay depressed. Stay worried. Stay in whatever it is you got to whine and complain about all the time. Uh, instead of coming to Jesus and getting free. Um, and Jesus told this woman, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Go in what I gave you and be whole of thy plague. And so Jesus told her to go in peace, which is to go really in, in, into undisturbed, untroubled well-being, to go on into prosperity and, and get back everything you done lost in all this and more with it. Hallelujah. And so the key to this woman is hearing, not necessarily what your physical is, but hearing with your spirit, hearing about Jesus. And, and it's, it's written, let me read it again in John, uh, the importance of us hearing about Jesus uh, so that we can believe that the Lord can do it in our lives. But these are written, John 20, 31, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the one sent from God, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now, now let's go to Romans. You'll see it again, chapter 10. <clears throat> that if thou shalt confess, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all them, all that call on his name. So the, the word teach us God is rich unto everybody that call on his name. Hallelujah. And he's not doing greater for the Jew, doing greater for the Greek. And <clears throat> he said everybody can be rich toward God who call on his name. Now, now you go down in verse 13. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See? Now, now, in order for you to call on the name of the Lord, how then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? You can't. <clears throat> you can't call on Jesus. And you've not believed. How shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? You got to hear. 
in Hosea chapter uh, 4, verse 6, it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Why would you want to be destroyed for a lack of knowledge when you could get the knowledge and not be destroyed? My people are destroyed. Destroyed in the Hebrew means cut off for a lack of knowledge, a lack of who Jesus is and what Jesus did. Now, listen, this is like you could convince yourself in your own human thinking. We call it head knowledge, not revelation. You, you could have a historical uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ and not faith that what he did in the past, he can do in your life today. And even what he didn't do, if you don't see a story in there of a situation that you have, but when you read about the things that Jesus did, that is supposed to impart faith to you that Jesus can come through in any area that you're facing in your life. The whole key is <clears throat> that Jesus went around loving people. He didn't pick certain diseases. He just healed people that came to him. And he's still like that today. And it's sad that, that people preach he's not like that today. And what that does is it, it, it stops him from loving you showing you his love and power in those areas. And he wants to show you that love and power. And so my people are cut off for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Now, now listen carefully at this. Listen carefully at this. You know, people. some people think they really Bible people. They really ain't. Uh, they just pick the parts they want. But can you show in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, can you show me, can you let me read where Jesus say, when I'm gone, I ain't doing that no more. Can, can you let me read where it's written that in the book of Acts, it's a scripture that says when the apostles die, all this is gone. Can, can you show me a scripture? In the end of the letters, from Romans all the way to Jude, where any of the apostles wrote from the Holy Ghost that God is through with power, God is through with miracles, God do not heal people anymore. Can you Go read where that's written. So we can see the devil brought that out. Because it's not written. It is not written. And so the Bible teach us that the Lord wrote these things. And this woman with the issue of blood, she, she had to get knowledge. She had to hear that Jesus was hidden. I, I want to proclaim to you today that Jesus is still the same. Now let me let me read your story in Matthew 9, 27. And when Jesus departed things, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Now, this is written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Thy son of David, have mercy on us. And and, and Jesus, that, 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 that's just the knowledge they had, but Jesus wasn't no son of David. And um and when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. Now, here, here they is. Uh, they were following Jesus. And um, they were asking Jesus to have mercy on them. And, and Jesus never paid them any attention. Because they, they were begging. And Jesus never responds to begs. He responds to faith. That he can do it. That he's the Christ. He's the one sent from God. And he loves us. Because he died on the cross for us. And when, when he was coming in the house. Listen. The blind man could have stayed outside. And, and, and stayed discouraged. Like a lot of people do. But instead of them being discouraged. 
This is written now for us to believe. What did they do when Jesus was coming in the house? The blind man went on in the house where he was. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Oh, yes, Lord. They could have said, well, I hope so. Well, no, they wouldn't have got healed. Well, we we sure, you know, believe, you know, that you, you know, you might be able to. No, no, no. When you talk to Jesus like that, you get zero. No, they say, yeah, Lord. Then, 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 then touch ye their eyes saying, according to your faith. Yes, Lord, I believe you can do this. Be it done unto you. And so when, when you approach Jesus, this is written so you will know how to approach the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, um, uh, they, they, uh, their eyes were open. And, and Jesus charged them that they tell no man. But they, you know, they, they, they wasn't right because they went around and spread in, uh, in his fame in all the country. Made him couldn't even come in in certain cities anymore because... He told them, don't do that. I don't know why they went and done it. And he told them, I mean, if somebody just opened my blind eyes and said, don't go spread this, I, I've just been quiet. But they, they did. And so you see the principle here that's written. That you can't approach Jesus and, and, and question him, you know, can the Lord and will the Lord do this for you? You, you have to go to the cross. And you have to hear about what Jesus did. For example, you know, it is written that, that uh, the Lord has forgiven us. He has taken our sins away. Well, that's written so when you come and confess your sin, you will believe that Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's talking to a believer. And, and you out there that's never been born again, the Lord wants you to, to hear that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, and took all your sins away. He took all your sins away. So God's only holding against you one sin. And that's just in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. He's not counting up or holding against me in their trespasses, but he's canceled all of them. Oh, glory to God. God's canceled every sin of everybody in the world. He's reconciled us to himself. He's not counting up. God's not holding against you. You might be reaping death for your sin, but God's not holding that sin against you. God's only holding one sin against everybody in the world, and that's the sin of unbelief, the sin of not accepting and not believing what Jesus did for you on that cross at Calvary. And when, when, when that sin is being held against you, that one sin of unbelief, you, you, you live in a life of struggle. Well, Pastor Scales, that's me you're talking to. I, I, I struggle all the time. All right, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to just take time today and teach you exactly what to do. What you need to do is go read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and you need to start saying he loves me you, you need to start saying I'm the disciple the Lord loves you, you need to start saying thank you Lord for dying for me and taking my sins away on the cross and the more you say that the more you hear that out of your mouth the more that faith comes to you Romans 10, 17 says, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I, I like the Amplified Bible. Uh, it makes that look clear as we close today. And I want to pick this back up tomorrow. Uh, it, it's just so much that's written to, to cause us to believe in the Lord Jesus. But this is the Amplified in Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So, so if you're going to get real Bible faith, it has to come from what, what's written about Jesus. And it has to come 
from, from what Jesus did for us on the cross and what Jesus speaks to us by the Spirit. Amen. And, and, and I tell you, if you got to get the words that come from Jesus lips because faith is supposed to come to you and it will come to you. If you will continually feed upon God's word, feed upon God's word and then put what you read into practice by believing and trusting in the Lord. Well, I want to make this six CD series available to you. It is written that you might believe Jesus is the son of God. On the screen is our address for love gift of $30 or more. And also, if you ask me, I'll send you a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. Saints, I'll make your checks and money orders to Robert Scales Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And Saints, you also can go on our webpage, robertscalesministries.org, and you can order with your credit card. So we invite you all to go to our webpage. Amen. Check out our catalog. And we know that you will be tremendously blessed. Amen. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. You can go uh, call our church number 615-237-9802 and get directions. Or you can go on our webpage and get it. RobertScalesMinistries.org. I tell you, we had such a glorious service yesterday. The Spirit of the Lord, saints, the Spirit of the Lord is moving mightily at Jesus as a church. And so you can go online. We stream our services live. Amen. And you can you can uh, watch us Thursday night, 7 o'clock p.m., 10 o'clock Sunday morning, 9 o'clock Sunday school. And uh, we know that you will continue to be blessed. Feed upon the word. Go read these gospels. Go read the letters. Meditate on the words of Jesus and allow that to, to put faith in you, to trust Jesus for every area in your life. Amen. And make sure you come up and shake my hand when you come to visit the church. Praise God. And this is saying, I'm telling you, it's diversity in Jesus and church. We got we got 70 percent of church white. And so we, we really don't care. And, and we got we Spanish, Puerto Rican uh, uh, and people from Japan. Man, we, I, I'm believing God for every nationality in the world to come and receive this message that Jesus done taught me to take back to the world. Amen. Well, my time is up. I want to thank my friends and my, my partners for your financial support. Thank you for helping me. You can go online, robscaleministry.org, and make your donations with your credit card. Thank you for writing me, letting me know how much the broadcast has been a blessing to you. And my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus Answer Minutes, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, saints, if Jesus loved you on that cross, go live his love. Let it love you all day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.